Good morning. We get those beautiful ideas, both from the Bible and the Course, right? To become like a spotless mirror. The Bible talks about we can become like a spotless mirror of the truth. And ideas from the Course around levels, level confusion has come to mind this morning. The Course talks quite a lot about that level confusion, which is an idea that, that we are a body and, and at the mercy of a, of a dream, of a world, giving power to separate body. We can say, well, it's easy, you know, for someone who is enlightened or almost enlightened or very, very clear, but all of us can practice redirecting our minds. We always have the power to look at our thoughts and redirecting our minds. And that is to aim for right-mindedness. And that is always possible, no matter where we find ourselves. We read the other day, like, you haven't yet gone back far enough. And that is why you became so fearful. You didn't go back to the source. And that is very fearful to not be in the source, to not be in the state of mind where only peace is, where God is. And if you didn't get to that point, to that state, you will try to content yourself with inappropriate means, which to me sounds like compromise, like trying to change the form, trying to manipulate the form or making us feel kind of soothing the mind with distractions, even using other people as a distraction, I think is very common, the familiar. Maybe this morning we can aim for a deeper place, a deeper peace that doesn't come from anything outside, doesn't come from a person. As we go within, we our minds will naturally flow in that direction unless there is some big blockage, a big issue that is up that you need to express. But otherwise, the mind naturally goes inward to, towards, it wants to go home. And it's not in a way of sleep. It's not in a way of feeling groggy or drugged. It's a very soft and clear place. Maybe we use today's lesson to help this direction. There is a peace that Christ bestows on us. Lesson 305, there is a peace that Christ bestows on us. This is what I was talking about, and this is just a few words to help us into this experience. Who uses but Christ's vision finds a peace so deep and quiet, undisturbable and wholly changeless, that the world contains no counterpart. Comparisons are still before this peace, and all the world departs in silence as this peace envelops it and gently carries it to truth, no more to be the home of fear. For love has come and healed the world by giving it Christ's peace. Father, 
the peace of Christ is given us because it is your will that we be saved. Help us today but to accept your gift and judge it not. For it has come to us to save us from our judgment on ourselves. It's come to us to save us from our judgment on ourselves. What if that was the only problem there ever was, a judgment on ourselves? You can just go into this moment. This moment of stillness and of peace. Letting ourselves allow what is here right now. This moment is a gateway to the eternal, to the unchanging. Keep hearing in my mind in the retreat we had this mantra in our last retreat. The kingdom is perfectly connected, perfectly united, and the ego will not prevail against it. Amen. Beautiful to sing it. Let me try. <laughs> the kingdom is perfect, united, perfectly protected, and the ego will not prevail against it. The kingdom is perfectly united and perfectly protected, and the ego will not prevail against it. And let this message sing in your heart. Whenever you feel doubt, if there's anything to be shared, anything to bring forward.
Yeah, I, I just don't want to hide what I'm feeling. I feel like hiding and What are you feeling? Confusion, I think, and I don't, I sometimes, like yesterday, last night, I got into this spiral of ego thinking, and I don't know sometimes how to get out of it, and and I get very scared by that because I don't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in those moments, and I feel very alone, and and then I feel this guilt for not being able to change my mind. And I, I don't understand. I don't understand why. So you, you became very afraid of your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm very afraid of my thoughts, like... I can't just kind of watch them. It's like my mind is so messy. I can't just watch them go fast. It's just, yeah, it's just a mess in there. And do you feel this? Did you feel this now too, this morning? I did um, for a little bit and it kind of got more peaceful in the joining. Mm. Yeah, yesterday I tried to follow a prompt and to sort of get up and, and leave when I wanted to. And it started from that point. It was like this huge. After that, just a lot of like, well, you shouldn't be doing that. And maybe you should have stayed. And mm. oh. self judgment. So. Mm. The lesson says, help us today, but to accept your gift and your should not, for it has come to save us from our judgment on ourselves. So it sounds like the ego wants to get a chance to judge and punish you for what you do or what you did. Like that's, I think that's one of the ego's major weapons. It judges form, like what you did and what you did not do, what you did wrong or what you did not do right. You know, just to see that and say no to that when when that happens, because it sounds like it became a spiral of spinning thoughts of that you were wrong or you did it wrong. Maybe other layers came in as well. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's, I can catch it and then move on. And sometimes it just spirals out of control. It's like this addiction to, to it. And I have this like, self-concept that I've just had a lot of that in my past so it's it's kind of like a conclusion like oh, okay that's gonna happen yeah it's just a lot of fear underneath it and I really want to change I really want to yeah I really want to just let, it, let that go mm. yeah and it is really good that you look at it, you're talking about it, you're seeing it. Seeing that the ego is wrong. Of course you're not. You didn't do the wrong thing. Your intention, your prayer is to follow guidance. You felt to go up and leave. And I think the ego likes to think of bodies and people of, comes in and well, what would they think? What, what do they think of me now? Or what you know, did I hurt them? Did I hurt someone? Or 
Yeah, and level confusion has been coming to me actually the past couple of days with body thoughts, just like constant body thoughts. But I am a little bit confused by level confusion as well. Yeah. Maybe you can explain it. Yeah. Yeah, it says level, level confusion is to raise body thoughts to the level of the mind. And I'd say that's all thoughts of bodies or of form. So whenever you think of what other people think or what is happening, or, or the mind is still, the mind is serene, the mind is at peace. If there is concern, or fear, or worry, we have raised the body thought. And it's a really, really high state of mind. It's an advanced teaching to not have any body thoughts because there has been such identification on this plane to bodies, especially to one body, the one you call your own name. So we need some gentleness as we practice this. Yeah, I feel like I'm trying really hard. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't need to try as hard, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> try it gentle. Mm. And it seems like we have a lot of associations, I'd say, to memories. Like this whole world is like a big memory, like a past memory of, uh, that is over. But to the extent that we think we are here in this world, we have kept some memories. And I think sometimes memories trigger us. I think the whole thing is a big memory that has triggered us, but then within it, there are specific events that flushes something up. Yeah. Yeah, I always get memories, different things, and especially with family, just like memories that come up that I did something wrong, that I, I'm guilty in some way, and so I owe that to them to, you know, just to be a good person or be a good daughter or yeah so all of it is just it is off it, it's coming from the past that's why we really want to hand over the past we want to hand over the bodies the people because so you're talking also about guilt like that the guilt that you owe them something because I also I feel sometimes like I'm supposed to forgive them personally like I'm supposed to be around them and forgive the whole family and everything and so I need to stay around them to do that and not leave if I want to leave or not follow a prompt because I have to forgive this situation and this particular thing No. No, you don't need to stay in the swamp to forgive the swamp. You, you, can, you can leave. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think that comes from that idea you owe them. Believe that you owe them. So therefore you should stay around and make it all good again. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because who would need to make it good for images? You know, if it's all just the images of mind, it's all just projections of thoughts. You can make it good. 
in a movie, like if you're watching a movie, you can't go in and change it and make it, make the plot shift. You can only watch it and release it. Very good, you said swamp, because the swamp is sucking. Sometimes those swamps are like those deep, horrible things that can suck, suck you in, suck you down, <laughs> so you sink. Yeah, because I was in the kitchen the other day, I think it was yesterday, and my auntie was doing forms for my granddad because my granddad's my granddad died. So she was filling out his forms and she was like, people have more forms after death and I hate forms. And I was like, oh gosh, that's so bleak. <laughs> <laughs> this, this world is like, even, even after death, you're filling yeah. out forms for a body. <laughs> work. Yeah, she was filling out and she was so like, oh, she was really not enjoying it. I was like, this, this world is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is mad. It was good news. It was never our home. Hmm. We were never here. How can you find love in a loveless place but by realizing that you're not there? I was always fascinated by that quote from the Course. Who you are is not in the world. It never was. But to the extent that there is still attachment or fear or yeah, something to forgive. To that extent, you believe you're a person in the world, having something to live up to, owing something, having to fix something. But we can be glad that it is it is over. This world was over long ago. There are no death forms. Not really. <laughs> yeah, I think we're here to get out of the world. Like, we're not here to fix it, to fix a person. Just here to realize we was never here. What is it? What was the desire to think we were here? It can be good to take a look. What was the desire I had to come to this planet? <laughs> <laughs> I had something out. A uh, message. Or thing on Facebook, it says something like, oh, if you think you're having a bad day, just know that there's there's a ticket counter at the airport in Austria. It's the people who meant to fly to Australia and, and they ended up in Austria instead. Well, you know, we, we, took, we took the wrong trip to this world. <laughs> we just need to, we just need to get back where we're from. And that Holy Spirit ticket counter and get booked on the right the right trip. <laughs> yeah. And this is a moment by moment decision, practice, direction of thought, direction of our thinking. We can go we go to this ticket counter every moment. Mm -hmm to buy the ticket home or to illusions. The ticket home is free. <laughs> ticket to illusion has a high cost. Seemingly, it's not real, but in experience, yeah seems to have a cost, seems to be very painful with some small glimpses of 
joy, but they're there just to be covered over again. So it's beautiful that we can practice to go home, that we can come together and really strengthen this in the mind. The mind is free, the mind is soaring. I'm thinking even how affected we can be by our our senses. The senses are like the characteristics of being a body. Smell, touch, taste, noise, or hearing, eyesight. They are all made by the ego. That's why they overwhelm us. It's like constant, constant impression. So it's very, very healing to give them all over to spirit, to let them be used for healing, for forgiveness. So that can be used for going on. Can they really, really affect us unless we give them meaning? Yesterday I visited two public toilets and they brought her. Sometimes here in Spain, they, they don't have a high standard on cleaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I had some forgiveness with that, the smell and the way it looked and the way it felt. But Jesus encourages us to make it all the same. And make this toilet different by making them all the same. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, it's just the fear of being at the mercy of being a victim to something external. That's always the only issue. And it comes from having judged. Like he asked in this lesson, we judged ourselves. Hi, good morning. I have a question, um, Jenny. When you say we judge ourselves, to me comes always, the, in my mind comes, a, there is a split, always a feeling of a split. There must be someone who judged some other thing. There must be two. And but I, I sometimes feel there is nobody else. If I go down, if I feel also in the meditation sometimes, I'm searching for something. Mm -hmm. If I say, I don't find this Christian. It's, it's, it's not so, so gripping me, but it's, it's showing up down, 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 and doesn't end. It doesn't end with an entity. Nice. That's a kind of opening. Yeah. But it's also fear. Fear comes yeah. out. And, I, and sometimes I have the feeling if I see somebody, see many somebody else, I don't find him. Mm -hmm. I, I don't find really, uh, I see the form and I hear the speaking and 
everything happens, but but nobody's there. But nobody's there. Yeah. yeah, this is your mind is starting to open up to wake up. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's also the feeling that um, if I listen to what you're saying and we are together here and we uh, we go into this inside, the more the, this, the truth is spoken, I feel, the more contraction is also building up. It's mm -hmm. like something inside presses against this. Yes, I just want to share these feelings that I am dealing with. It's really, uh, it's confusing sometimes. Uh, I, I'd say that is the resistance, the ego's resistance to truth. So to see, okay, was there some fear there? Or was there some something that I can release, you know? Because you know, you 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 recognize that it is the truth. You recognize, you resonate, but then the other part is split again. <laughs> the other part is getting tight. It's really a kind of defending. So, as the Course says, it's felt, it's a defending against the truth. It's, this body wants to, to stay, to stay in charge. And maybe it's helpful to just ask in that moment, what am I identified with? Yeah, something dark up now dark it's it's like a hole in the middle of but it's very very uh, it scares me to look at this Yeah, Jesus, can you imagine holding Jesus' hand? And he says, I assure you, this is not a fantasy. And not at all. It's coming to mind a place in the Course where he says that you can even look at the darkest illusion wholly without fear. You are loved. Who else would like to share? It's like a huge block. You see all the it is just a void and you know like all these defense mechanisms and and the fear I'm looking at it and the fear what is going on really because I feel part of me feels the need to go to maybe do some volunteer work or something rather than to just sit in the apartment but at the same time it feels like in this state I can't I can't really function or focus on anything. It's like you're not trying to be normal for most people, but well, maybe that conclusion is not true. Also, feel really frustrated that uh, this is not really coming up into my awareness and being hard on myself with it, you know, trying to. Yeah, I think it's a feeling of being afraid of failing. Yeah. So what if you're okay right now? Yeah, 
what comes with this is a lot of physical pain as well. Mm. Or that the ego is fighting. You know, if you if you open up a little bit to peace, the ego throws in something physical, something. So, well, I have this weapon, or I, you know, I'm gonna make sure you feel that you are a body. But you can see that with gentleness too. It's just another, it's just fear. It's just another fear. Because the ego likes to fight, and and you, you've been fighting enough with yourself. So I think it's just to say now, okay, I see this. I'm going to allow gentleness to flow over it. I can face this also. I can see this also. This defense of the ego. And maybe the idea of volunteer work is coming from a place that you feel uncomfortable being with yourself being with this self so even that can be gentleness can flow over that too the solutions of okay I should do something here no, but yeah it's the belief I think that I I should extend hmm. um, to hmm. have it feel or something like that does it feel inspiring Joyful. No, it feels more like what you said. It's just feels difficult to be with myself. Mm. Maybe the highest extending is forgiving yourself right now. Yeah, I just feel so confused because when you say that, um, I feel like, how? How do I do that? It's with this gentleness we spoke about. Yeah, it's not, it's not an intellectual, mental effort. It's more restful than that. Thank you. Yeah, it works with us with gentle steps, very gentle steps. Maybe now after this session, ask ask what your next step is. It's the next step. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, have a beautiful day.